welcome. I'm James O'Loughlin. Look, I hope nothing ever goes wrong with you. I hope you live your entire life in perfect health forever and never get sick or hurt your knee. But let's face it, that ain't going to happen. We all get sick, we all get a cut on our foot and who do we thank when we get fixed? Doctors, right? But who should we thank? Not only doctors, but inventors as well because if no one had invented the Band-Aid, what's the doctor going to put on your cut foot? So tonight, inventions aimed at keeping us healthy. Physiotherapist Natalie Bennett Bremer was treating a five-year-old girl with a hip injury when she came up with an idea she thinks could help thousands of children, including one of her two daughters. One of the big steps in a child's life is when they take their first step. For most of us, walking is such a fundamental part of our life that we never give a moment's thought as to whether we're doing it in the right way. We're a family of three girls. Um, Asha is eight and Olivia is seven. We spend a lot of time by the coast. We do a lot of swimming, walking on the beach, collecting shells. As a sports physiotherapist, I specialise in the management of hypermobility disorders affecting babies, children and adolescents. Hypermobility disorder manifests itself as an increase in joint flexibility, um, coordination issues, an increased tendency to bruise, um, an increased tendency for sprains, strains and dislocations. It's actually quite common. I'd say if I walked into any classroom, perhaps three or four in every 30 children I would see would have a hypermobility disorder. A young girl came into my office. On examination she had um, an excessively rotated leg and pigeon toeing on one side. Normally in that sort of situation we would use taping. Um, the problem with this is many children can't tolerate tape for a very long period of time, more than a few, few hours or few days. And um, also it's very difficult for the parent to put on, on a regular basis. Please welcome Natalie Bennett Bremer with Mia. Hey Nat. Hey Mia. Hi. Hey, this is a spiral thigh brace and it's really as an alternative to taping or those rigid braces for hip, people with hip and walking problems. What are, what's your problem with the other methods? Okay, um, taping is okay for a couple of days at yep. a time, but it's really not something you can use for a medium or a long term option. Right. Um, and some of the more rigid braces reduce the um, normal flow of movement so it doesn't look like a normal walking pattern. It makes them very stilted. Uh -huh. And Mia is going to help us to demonstrate your invention today. So Mia, do you want to take a little walk for Nat? Mia, we'll just get you on this line over here and I just want you to walk down towards that other line for me. Now while she's walking, what we're looking for not only is the foot position, but how the hips turn um, inwards as she walks. An easy uh, task for the parent is if they draw little faces on the kneecaps and if the faces are talking to each other when they're walking, we know their hips are turned inwards when they're walking. Nice work, Mia. I was pretty impressed with that walk. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, we're going to see what happens when Mia walks in the spiral thigh brace. So you're going to duck in behind okay. the screen Thank for us, Mia, and, screen, and change you into your gear. Yes, and that what kinds of conditions, what sort of hip and walking conditions in yep. lay people's language? Yep. So, um, uh, hypermobility, which is ligamentous laxity. Which is, um, so pigeon toes? Yeah, pigeon toes, knock knees, um, scissoring gait and cerebral palsy as uh -huh. well, we can use it for that. Yep. Um, they're the general, and low tone, low tone. So anything that will cause the legs to sink in. Right, okay, yep. so it just gives that, it's like having a skeleton on the outside almost. Yes. And I think we're just now Hello. seeing it modelled in person. <laughs> Hi Mia, do okay. you want to hop up so on the Put Mia up on the table. Also, we'll lift her up here. How do they feel, Mia? Is that comfy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So basically, we just make sure that they're positioned um, right up in, uh, so it's fitted right into the groin area. Not too tight there. No. So, uh, no. And then what we would do is, is rotate the leg outwards, and then use a hook and loop fastening to adhere the position. Right. And so this, the spandex, really holds the skin in place and this yeah. tab puts the pressure Controlled, on top. Yeah, stabilises the yeah. joint in that particular position and then yeah. the second strap comes around to the opposite hip yeah. to stabilise the pelvis. And we put that leg back to normal yeah. and then we bring this one out and we exaggerate the position somewhat. Yeah. So we'll put on the next strap and we pull that round and place that on the hip and then we turn Mia around uh -huh. towards the wall. Good job. And then we see a, cro a crossover effect across the pelvis. Okay, so now we'll pop Mia down. We'll come down this way. Can we go for Mia. another walk, Mia? Another walk. So I'll place you here. Then, Mia, I just want you to walk up towards that line for me. 
great stuff. Good girl, and come back again. Beautiful. You look very sporty. Okay, that? so we'll sit you down again so you can have a rest now. Yeah, your, your hard job's done. <laughs> well done, Nick. <Nathan. laughs> Natalie, is that um, hypermobility disorders in children can sometimes actually improve with age. So have yes. you found it really difficult to do clinical trials to be able to prove? Yes, and we've only had it, um, I've only been designing it for the last probably two years, so longer term trials and that obviously haven't been possible at this stage. Yeah. What we find is that the majority of children, probably 85% of children, um, will self-correct by the age of eight. Yeah. But those that have um, severe internal rotation at the hips tend to maintain that position and generally if it's still there at eight, it's, it's going to be an ongoing yeah, problem. Sure. And how long do they actually have to wear the garments per day? Or Yeah, well what we recommend is four to five hours a day in the period of the day where they're most active um, and generally for about two, uh, sorry, three to four months and by that stage in conjunction with strengthening exercises for the hip, um, we hope that it will change their, their position. That so they, they have to with. do their work as well? They have yes, to do they do exercises. and that's the yeah. idea of it yeah. is to help the muscles learn how to do the job themselves. Yeah. Now the external frame, which is the thing that was commonly used, that's quite big it's quite bulky. Do you yes. get better results with that than you do with the spiral thigh brace? Uh, if you have something rigid that doesn't allow the knee and the hip to still bend in their normal pattern, it's not mimicking a normal gait pattern. And so, now, yeah. I looked at this and I immediately thought that there's probably other applications. Have you thought about the kinds of other things? You know what, someone from the studio actually suggested that for um, hip dysplasia or con yeah. congenital hip dislocation. And um, certainly I'll, I will be looking into doing some trials on that because I think it's a fantastic idea. And then just balance <laughs> as we myself. get older, you know, just That's as a right. way of... Right. Well, thanks for bringing us in and, and showing us all your range of spiral thigh brace. And thank you, Mia, for being such a great model. Cheers. <laughs> All right, what time is it? It's time for our judges to pick a winner. Is it Natalie Bennett Bremer's Spiral Fire Brace, Liam Scott, Matt O'Malley and five other people from Adelaide's Trinity College's Space Saver Spacer or Alfred Veg Vary's Abacist? I think in terms of my own uh, clinical practice, the, the Space Saver Spacer was yes. the one, I think, for me. Yeah, yeah. anywhere you want. I actually think that the spiral thigh brace, you put it well when you said it's an exoskeleton. Right? Yeah. It really is, you know, and, and yet rather than having this big clunky metallic piece that you're... All the stuff, you, the sticky tape that you, you know, get allergic to and, right. and won't wear. But just build it into the gar mm. garment really easily and make it adjustable. Well, it just seems mm. like that's, it's a very good idea. So, um, the, the thigh brace, um, at that price, that's, you know, maybe the cost of one and a half visits to a physio. Right. If you can have the child helping themselves, and especially, I mean, you know, having pigeon toes is one thing, but if you've got cerebral palsy or some sort of spastic spasticity, having something that gives you the strength to, to correct your walk is a phenomenal thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we already we know also need the spiral thigh brace. All right yeah. then, well, I think I know what you're going to pick, but what is your winner and why? They're both really good elements of design. Design. We need both of them, and I think that it's clear that there's a larger market for the spacer. Um, but I do think because there are other solutions, I'm going to go with the spiral thigh brace. You judged right. There you go. The winner is the spiral thigh brace. Uh, inventor Natalie Bennett Bremer. Thank you, Natalie. Well done, Bennett. Thank you. Natalie is now the running to be named our inventor of the.